Hey everybody, it's Pax. Welcome back to the Edge of the Earth, Solo Winifred. We're heading into Scenario 4, The Heart of Madness. Today we're taking the slightly unorthodox skip directly into Part 2, partially because I want to see how challenging the scenario is without any of the seals, but also because I chose plus 3 resources from Takata and plus 2 cards in hand from Danforth as effects in the previous interlude, and I'm like 95% certain that those only apply to Part 1 if you choose to play it. Um, and I want that killer hand and bonus starting resources going into the finale proper rather than that pre-finale thing. And I just want to see how challenging it is, like I said. So let's hop into it. Um, let's take a look at the deck list before we get into the introductions. So this is the finale of our Polar Pilot deck list. We added on you during the interlude. I forgot to add Ellsworth's boots in the last one, and I did lose a Tekulili um, throughout that. All I've got left is a single take one damage Tekulili card. Uh, we are taking Danforth, the Resolute Danforth. Um, that amount of card draw and that Sanity Soak is just going to be super good. But in terms of the upgrades, I have upgraded with my 5 XP, one, uh, my second backstab to the backstab level 3, a single copy of Manual Dexterity to level 2, and then I've used um, one Adaptable to swap a Nimble and a Breaking and Entering into the deck for an Unexpected Courage and a Cheap Shot. Um, I think the Nimbles are going to be really useful getting around the map. I really missed them in the previous scenario, and I think I really need them here. And Breaking and Entering is going to be letting me grab clues and also automatically evade um, those bad boys at my location when they come into play. So I think that's going to be really good, too. All right, so Scenario 4, The Heart of Madness. We get our normal introduction, introductory text. Dr. Amy Kensler is dead, so I will read this one. Step by step, you and the survivors trek f further down the incline. The mood of your party is grim and hopeless. You feel as though there is no coming back from this place. You will likely meet your end here. The weight of this burdensome thought makes each of your steps heavy. Each investigator suffers one physical trauma, so we're back up to three physical trauma. We did not scout the Fork Passage, um, so we suffer no ill effects. Danforth is alive, and so we suffer no ill effects. And the Miasmic Crystal is listed in our supplies recovered, so we suffer no ill effects. That's very good we have that, because adding a frost token here would get us back up to five, and that would be brutal. And beyond the gate, we hear the familiar churning and bubbling and frothing of miasma and the seething of hateful mist. It's beyond this door, one of your party says, and you cannot help but agree. And we either uh, stay here and study the right door, or we, there's no time to waste, we pass through the gate. You will skip the first part of the scenario, skip directly into Heart of Madness Part 2. Let's skip. The introduction is going to be different as well, because the, uh, in this campaign, unlike our previous one, Dr. Kensler is not alive, and she does not understand the true nature of the miasma. So let's read intro three. You can glean only a fraction of the truth hidden within these ancient murals, but what you discover is almost too impossible to believe. When the other things came to the Earth over a billion years ago, they colonized not just Antarctica, but the entirety of the planet. And when they did, this place, and the entity that dwells within, was already here. They built their complex around it to study the primordial being within, to greater understand it, and in doing so, attracted forces beyond even their ken. The gateway and its seals were constructed to contain it, but ages of disrepair have left it weak and ineffective. You suspect it was the presence of intelligent life on Antarctica, the humans who began to explore its long dead peaks and icy plains that stirred the entity within. The murals tell of the facility's structure, of five pylons created not only to contain the creature's essence, but to power the whole of Elder Thing civilization. You can only imagine that destroying these pylons would reduce, reduce the entire compound, perhaps even the entirety of the mountain it is built beneath, to rubble. You don't know if you can truly destroy or contain this nameless horror, but you have no choice but to try. If it continues to escape, the very concept of reality will be re rewritten to its whim. There will be nothing left but the mirage, nothing left but twisted, horrid imagination, a nightmare from which there is no awakening. The truth of the mirage eludes you. So once again, we do our setup, which is all provided... Um, in Tabletop Simulator. And once again, Tika Toys uh, completely hooked us up with this beautiful setup uh, thing. I don't know if this is implemented in the latest version of the mod. I had to import it as a zip file because this is an old save from quite a while ago. But um, you don't disturb what's on the table. You click the setup button, and boom, they get randomly distributed according to the rules within. So I've got mist pylons like this, five of them. It's very nice to have four of them all relatively clumped together. I can start at one of these locations, according to the setup, and kind of move around, grab some clues, and then just boom, blitz blitz through them all, and get out. And before we get too deep into the setup, I should do my opening hand, which is, again, uh, seven cards. 
replace this tech illegally. We got a lock picks. We got a Gregory Gry. We got an Intel report. We got Kensler's log. Wow, we are absolutely set up for investigations. I'm going to get rid of this Intel report. I don't need that yet. Wow, this is this is hard to deny. I think I can safely get rid of the easy mark. Wow, what what an opening hand. I think I think that that's what I need to do and I think I need to get rid of at least one of these, at least one of these to try and set up some more health soak because my health is not looking good or a backstab in my hand. And I think I'm going to go for I think I'm going to go for the quick thinking because a momentum can really save me with a lock picks on a uh, on something nasty. So we're going to go for that three new cards. Another Gry, another lock picks, and a 25. Well, the 25 is not great in this scenario. It's okay against um, some units, but it's not the greatest against um, the boss guy by any means. So, uh, and it's it's very bad against the locations. So this is likely going to be icons, but I guess we'll see how that goes. And as I said during the setup, I do spawn at one of these four locations. I think I'm going to choose this one and do something like boom, 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 boom before I come hit these up. Something like that. Um, or I can just come around. It depends on how the clues turn out, but I'll, I'll go with this one first. So I start here. It is a three shroud location. The vaulted corridor. You choose another vaulted corridor and test X agility where X is the number of locations away, and you if you succeed, you move there. Limit once per round. And you have to keep in mind, the limit once per round is um, not a maximum once per round, so it's like just for this one ability um, on this location. So you can't just like bounce back and forth between two indefinitely. Um, but it is a free triggered ability, so it's nice and quick. Nothing else notable is happening during setup, so let's begin. The seal weakens, we've got a three doom threshold, and collapse the pylons. Uh, each revealed Miss Pylon can be attacked as if it were an enemy. Its fight value is equal to its shroud value, and its health is equal to its clue value. While it has no health remaining, it is collapsed. When you discover one or more clues in a Miss Pylon, you can spend those clues to deal that much damage to the Miss Pylon. So when you discover one or more clues, you have to spend all of those clues. You can't go up, up or down from the amount that you uh, discovered. And at the end of the round, if each Miss Pylon is collapsed, we advance the act. So right off the bat, we're going to go ahead and get a lockpicks into play for three. We're going to get a Gregory Grind to play for three. And then we're going to uh, lockpick this location. So that'll be eight against the Shroud value of three, I believe. And we do have icons to commit to this, but I don't want to use the momentum. And honestly, I almost don't really want to use the lockpicks either. I might need to use a second lockpick to, to really get going on some of these locations. Um, that might be my ticket out of here. So I'm going to go eight against three, and I'm just going to put one resource into this because um, there are a decent number of minus fours in the bag which I didn't go over yet so the skulls are currently a minus one um, they'll be minus threes pretty soon the cultist which I played wrong in my last campaign is a minus one but if there's a seal or if I'm at a mist pylon it's a frost token instead and I definitely messed that up there were some uh, tests that I should have had worse uh, tokens on, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Minus three on the uh, tablets. If you fail, draw the top card of the Tekalili deck. The other things are the scary one. Minus four, if you fail by three or more, place one Doom on the current agenda. This can cause the current agenda to advance. Disgusting. Anyways, we're into this test. We're eight on three. We'll, we'll spend one from Gregory. We get the minus three, but we do get the buck back. And we get the clue. So we get upkeep. A mineral specimen and a Kensler's log. Wow, we are rolling in investigative prowess. One out of three doom. And our first encounter card of the scenario is the curse, the madness within. Test four for each point you fail by. Shuffle the top card of a Techie Lily deck in your deck without looking at it. For each card you cannot shuffle, take or. Well, we are failing this tremendously. Let's not tr pull that Elder Thing token. Oh, and there it is. Oh, that is just so painful. This is this is going to be nasty, isn't it? The exact same thing is going to happen to me that happened with uh, Stella and Amanda. So I get four Tekalili decks, four, four Tekalili cards into my deck. And I get a Doom. Not looking good already. So like I said before, I've got options of how to do this. I could like move here and just get one of these done. And then come this way and hope that there's clues there. But I'm fairly certain that some of these locations don't have clues. 
And so I need to reveal a couple of them so that I can defeat these and get into all of them. Right? Especially if I don't have a weapon right now. If I can't just backstab this location, I have to, like, spend the clues to deal with damage. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of a slower attack and head down this way. First action. Another vaulted corridor. Okay. Cute. So I can move at an agility test of one between these, and I get to trigger an agility test doing that. Okay, that is neat. Okay, okay, cool. So that's action one. Two, we're going to do another lockpick. We're going to be eight against three. We're going to spend uh, two from Gregory. Want to get a little bit more money off of him this time. And <clears throat> I think I'm going to... Oh man, that Kensler's log is really tempting to be able to. These both of these are very tempting to just keep, um, at least one of them. And I don't want to commit the other Gregory because he's going to be really useful for Soak. So we're just going to keep. Are we just going to keep being a bit slow? We're going to keep being a bit slow. A zero. So we get the two resources. We get the clue. Okay, last action. We're just going to do one more move to here. Like I said, we're doing a bit of the slower route, but I think if I if all of these have clues, then I can just kind of like come in and blitz those out. And we'll see how that goes. So we'll move here last action. You've got to be kidding me. What is this? <laughs> all three vaulted corridors are here. All right, fine. Um, okay, no, that's actually kind of cute, isn't it? Okay, this is a potential way to get away from these... Um, from these, uh, what are they called, the nameless ones or whatever? I was, I really struggled with this with Amanda and Stella, so maybe this will be, maybe this will be a bit interesting. Okay, so upkeep, we get a breaking and entering, fine. We get our third doom, which is going to advance the act. Uh, we sp spawn a set aside copy of the nameless madness enemy at, at the Miss Pylon nearest to an investigator. So for us, that's a choice of either here or here. Um. And I think I'll start him at this one that's further away from us, right there. Now, he's a a one blank one, uh, alert, massive, retaliate, cannot take damage. After you successfully evade or attack him, for each point you succeeded by, exhaust the nearest ready copy of the Nameless Madness. So, the cute thing about this is that Winifred's actually, like, incredibly competent at just dealing with these guys. Um, if I had some action... Uh, some bonus actions from, like, Lou to Luke or something, I'd be a bit better. But uh, ge just generally speaking, this is really easy for me to deal with. Um, because I'm succeeding at everything in the bag except for a frost proliferation. Uh, but beyond that, the truth of the mirage eludes you. You stare dumbstruck at the hideous phantasmagoria. The air shimmers with a dreamlike quality about its damnable form. An endless weave of intermingled nightmare and memory. The very sight of it drives you to your knees. It is the final truth. Reality was the mirage. We search our deck for each copy of Tekalili and draws them one at a time in a random order without placing them on the bottom of the Tekalili deck. After resolving all of them, shuffle them back into the bearer's deck. Wow, that is really painful. Okay. All right, here's the five Tekalili cards from my deck. Let's resolve them one at a time in a random order. We take one horror. Thank you, Mr. Gry. After we've resolved all of them, we, place the, we shuffle these back into our deck. So if I trigger Danforth now, I just get to draw three cards. Um, for free. So I'm just going to do that. Um, I think cards is fine right now. Okay, yep, that's quite good. So one horror. Uh, I lose an action. I lose an action. That sucks. I take a damage. And I take a horror, which I'll just put on myself. Uh, I mean, at this point, I'm just going to, I'm going to take the damage and the horror onto, onto, um, uh, oh no, 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 no. I should put them on myself. Yeah, I should put them on myself. Because I think that... Uh, well, I'll, I'll put the horror on him. That's that's fine. But I'm pretty sure that there's still stuff that can target him. So that could be pretty nasty. And then those all get put back there and, and shuffled. Wow, that is uh, that is nasty. That is very nasty after having drawn top deck... Whoops, I just uh, I discarded all of them instead of instead of uh, putting them in a deck. But but having had drawn this is is really quite unfortunate for like the only Mythos card that I pulled. That was uh, That's pretty rough. So we'll shuffle those back in. And now we draw our encounter card for the turn. Draw the top card of the Tekalili deck, resolve its effects, shuffle it into my uh, deck instead of the De Tekalili deck. Place a clue on your location, place this in the bottom of the Tekalili deck. Okay, uh, we've got one action to do something this turn. 
um, which is a bit unfortunate because I just drawn all those cards. But we do get to do a cool um, agility test <laughs> uh, if we want to. So uh, we'll just go ahead and use the lock picks. Um, I'm going to churn a couple cards, I think. I'm going to momentum and the other lock picks um, to be at like 10 against three, and I'll do three resources off of Gregory. I'm going to try and clear him a bit quicker now. So we're 10 against three for our first action. Our only action is zero. So I get the one, two, three. I get minus three to my next test. And I get one of my one of those clues back. And then we're going to do the ability on this to choose another vaulted corridor and test X, where it's the number of locations away from this one. So we're going to be testing zero because of the momentum. And we're going to commit a watch this and just this normal manual dexterity to be very high up on this and spend one, two, three resources to um, have six resources coming back to us if we pass. Uh, we draw a card from Winifred, uh, the Dread Curse. So we'll, we'll re-pull that. Two, three, four, five. And then we pull the Chaos Token, a minus one. So this is still successful. One, two, three, four, five, six. We draw a card from the manual dexterity for being successful. And we clean up and move. And that is going to push us over to this one, because that's the one that we chose at two difficulty. And now, before my turn ends, the question is, do I bother playing this 45 automatic, or do I just wait on it? I think I just wait on it. I don't think there's any sense in having it out. It doesn't help me any further, so that's fine. Uh, nothing happens during the enemy phase right now. So I get an upkeep, which gets me clay pools furs, which I'm going to be playing immediately, because I'm going to need that soak for sure. So when we would uh, add a doom... We put a copy of the Nameless Madness at the location nearest to an investigator without a copy of that enemy that is connected to a location with a copy of that enemy. I have to put one of these to the nearest path to me, which I believe is, let's see, one, two, three, or one, two, three. That seems correct to me. So it's either here or here. And I'm going to go ahead and put him there. That seems slightly safer to me. If I can keep him away from the Mist Pylons, I'd like to. And then an encounter card, which is an obscuring fog. Perfect. What a gimme. Gotta love a gimme like that. So before I go any further, I am going to play Claypool's first, so I stop fucking forgetting about it. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to use an action and spend a clue to move into this first mist pylon. Let's get these started. So right here, this is the one shroud four clue location. We don't have the seals on it, but we can... Um, Wow, we can we can really mess this up, can't we? Perfect. So we're going to spend two to pop Kensler's Log into play. Um, we're going to do an investigate here with Kensler's Log. Uh, investigating uh, five against one. Um, do I care to over-succeed on this? Hmm. Not particularly. I don't think so. Let's just pull it. Um... We're going to deal a damage to this. Does this exhaust his... Nope, it does not. To return that to the bag and pull a new token. A minus two. We're going to do that. And a minus two. So we get two clues. That's going to do two damage to that location. So that's a pretty good start. We could last action do that again. Um, and I'm tempted to, to just get this out of the way. But I do still need clues to get into the rest of them. And so if I move here, then I'm like kind of stuck... Dealing a damage to this, something like that. I think, though, ultimately, I'm just going to go ahead for it and um, do that again. Um, five against one. Minus three. Easy. The first pylon is collapsed. Okay, nothing happens during the enemy phase. And then we'll do our upkeep over here, which is a nimble. Perfect. So what Nimble's going to allow us to do is, like, move here and then immediately trigger a manual dexterity and Nimble test. So, like, move here and then do, do, do or something like that. Like, get where I exactly where I want to go. Reveal a couple of locations so I know what's going on with clues on the board a bit better. But anyways, we get a Doom, which is going to be another copy of the Nameless Madness. Now, once again, where is this guy going, right? One, two. Has to go here. Has to go here. Unfortunately. But it is what it is. And then an encounter card. Wook, wook. Fucking penguins. There he is, and we're burning an extra action this uh, this round. Thank you very much, you jackass. Okay, well, we're going to do a double action to move here. 
But the nice thing with the double action to move there is that we can then uh, use that ability on the location. Um, again, it's a test of one, because I'm going to move here. Um, and where X is the number of locations away that the vaulted corridor is from this one, if you succeed, move there. So a difficulty of one. And we're going to be at five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, should I even bother with that much? Yeah, we're just going to go a bit faster. Um, we could get hit with a lot of Techie Lilies off this, which would really suck. That could suck. Let's 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 toss a pistol into this instead. Um, just so we get our one card draw. I don't need a second pistol. I think I only need one this scenario. I have a feeling. Um, but we do want to be testing um, a bit higher. So seven against one. Draw a card from Winifred. It's an intel report. Very good. Very, very good. We'll pull that token. A curse, which we cancel. A frost token, which we return to the bag. And a minus one. So we get our three moves. Um, this is after... It resolves. You can immediately move up to three times. So we get the move to here, and then I can take three moves. So I could, like, move, 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 and, like, evade him. But that would probably be a bad turn, I think. Um, I'm more likely to, like, move, 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 so I know what's on these locations. I think it's going to be move, move, revealing this. Uh, one clue location, three shroud, move. A four shroud location, one clue. Okay. Um, all I've done is move as a double action. I do have an, uh, an action left. So I'm going to investigate this location with the lock picks. Um, eight against four. Uh, frost token, which I'll have to eat. Occultist. There are no seals, and it is not a mispilant, so it's just a minus one. That's a minus two total, which gets me the clue. Uh, nothing during the enemy phase. Get upkeep, uh, an easy mark. Um, during the mythos phase... I think this guy's going to go here instead of on this pylon. Because then he'll be closer to me this way, I think. Let me think. Yeah, I think I'm going to move into here so that this goes that way. And then I can kind of work my way around. This is this is already getting a little claustrophobic uh, to these ones back here. And I kind of wish that I had taken maybe some haste or, or a Leo DeLuca or something like that to, to get a bit of extra action advantage on my turn. But nevertheless, counter cards. It is an obscuring fog. Another nice gimme. Um, plus two shroud, but it doesn't need to have clues or anything, and it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's spend a clue to move down to that mispylon. Here we go. There's a five shroud, one clue location. I think I just used the intel report to defeat this in one action, um, which I'm going to do for sure. That that seems that seems very valuable to just um, boom. That's a collapsed pylon, and we're done with that. Don't have to worry about that anymore. I think last action is just another move. We gotta keep on the go. We gotta go, go, go. But now it's a question of where do I go to avoid needing to, like, evade, investigate, move every turn for the rest of the game. And I think that location's here. So we're gonna move up there. It's a two shroud location, but we treat the first modifier, treat the modifier of the first frost token revealed during each skill test there as if it was a minus three instead of a minus one. So I might want to get the mineral specimen out and get both of these clues so that I have enough clues to get into the rest of the locations. I think that's the place. We get upkeep, a lucky cigarette case. I don't know, but I think I, I think I need to play that, but I'm a little worried that it's actually quite late in the scenario to spend actions playing that. But So, so I guess we'll see. We'll see. Um, instead of Doom, we get another encounter card. So one, two, or one, two. Well, let's move it to one that we've already been to. And then we get an encounter card. It is an Ancient Evil, which puts a Doom out and gets one of those guys on our location. So he's right there with us now. That's a bit of a bummer. So we're going to be evading him. We are five against uh, one. And let me just put in the easy mark and a manual dexterity to this to just crush this test. So five, six, seven, eight, nine against one. Um, yeah, we, we cancel that with the, with the furs. Not good. Whoops. Um, a frost token and uh, plus one. Okay, fine. Uh, so I draw two cards from the, I should have drawn a card with Winifred. That didn't have an impact on the skill test. That's good. Two cards for manual dexterity. I place a clue on my location. And then this gets put on the bottom of the Tiger Lily deck. Um, we're not going to draw with him because we're not going to have any actions. 
Uh, but we did succeed by a lot, so like every single one of these guys is evaded. Now, how do we get all these clues back? Mineral specimen. Gets three charges on it. And then we're just going to investigate with the mineral specimen. Uh, again, five against the shroud value, which is currently two. Five against two is pretty convincing when these frost tokens get canceled, but really one icon really pushes me into a nice spot. Um, and so I think I'm committing the Gregory Gry and, oh, I shouldn't have done that, and this breaking and entering. Um, as much as I'd like to keep the breaking and entering for next turn, <clears throat> my evades against them are, like, pretty convincing to begin with, and I would rather this not fail now for two clues than get the auto-evade action compression next turn on one clue, I think. I think. Um, could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. So, Winifred draws a card, the green soapstone, fine. And then I investigate seven against two. A minus three is successful. We get two of those clues from the location. And then that's that. He is exhausted, so we just do our upkeep. A perception, not bad. We do all ready. And then we start getting these guys just willy-nilly all around us. We'll send them down this way, because I don't really want to send them there. And then an encounter card, which is... Test... Uh, if, uh, five? If you fail, take two horror? Uh, yep, so we're going to fail that, for sure. Um, I could put this anything you can do better into this, so that I have odds at um, not taking two horror and spawning another guy. It's tempting, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's tempting. But I think we roll the odds on it. Yeah, plus one. So we do take um, two horror, which I'll just um, take on the chin. But that's fine. So we evade the guy at our location first. We are five against one. Um, I think that I have to just be okay with a five against one right now, as much as I'm not. That is a minus three currently, so let's scoot those over and not forget about that. But we do succeed. And we succeeded by two, I think, or one. So we evade him, and then for each point we succeed by, we evade the next one. Um, and now we have two clues right now. We need to get into three more pylons, so I am going to get the clue here with a lockpick and put one from Gregory. That puts us um, eight against two. Minus four. So we do get the buck off Gregory, and we do get the clue off the location. And then we'll just move move up to this one. This is the other subnautical sprawl. Okay, cool. Now we just need to, like, blitz these three locations if we can. And that's going to be tricky, because I don't have a ton of clue compression. But I do have the mineral specimen that can kind of get me there. So we get our upkeep. A quick thinking. That will help. Another Doom for one of these guys directly on me again. And then Encounter Cards. A Frozen in Fear. That sucks. Uh, but it's a good thing that we have this Lucky Cigarette case and there's anything you can do better. So we'll evade this guy for two actions. Um, let's commit the 45 auto and the quick thinking to it. I don't think this 45 auto is, is going to be going anywhere for us. So we're at um, 7 against 1. We'll put in two bucks from Gregory Gry and try to succeed by that much. A minus three. We do succeed by two. We get an action back as well. Um, did I draw a card from the two of them committing? No, I did not. Um, but I do lose an action. That's kind of funny. Um, and then this goes in the bottom of the Tekalili deck. And then I will use Danforth to draw three cards. And put this into my discard pile. Okay. He's evaded. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. And I definitely evaded him by two, otherwise I wouldn't have succeeded by enough. So we'll just like go like that. Um, and then I guess for our last action, we just move down here, right? So we spend a clue to move into here. There's a three-clue location with two shroud. So we spent one clue to do that. And now we're at the end of our turn. I'm going to commit this and this into this uh, Frozen in Fear. Um, note we're committing the lucky s the spare parts. Um, do I save that for another one? Eight against three, or 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 not, uh, um, ten against three. I'm going to go with ten against three. I don't really want to fail that. Uh, okay, um, so I do succeed it, and I'm I'm glad I did that. 
Um, I'm going to be losing an action on my next turn. So that was the end of that turn. <laughs> if it is your turn, lose an action. Oh yeah, now I gotta look this up. This is at the end of your turn. It's not your turn at the end of your turn. It can't be. That's nonsense. So I'm going to have one less action next round. And this is going to go away. So I'm going to have two actions. So I'm going to do upkeep and lose an action. We get another nameless spawn who I think has to go here. How many turns do I have left? Jesus, this is hard to track. One, two, three, four, five, six turns left. Um, I might be, um, I might take, be taking the back door out of here. Encounter card, please not an enemy, and ancient evils. Even fewer turns remaining. I think this guy has to go one, two, one, two. He'll go here. Um, so we're going to do a breaking and entering. Two resources to be eight um, against the shroud value. Eight against two. Uh, a frost token and a zero. So I do succeed by two. Um, so I get to evade him and gather a clue from the location. That's going to be one damage to the location. Like so. Um, and then we're going to use a mineral specimen charge with a green soapstone and a perception committed, drawing a card with Winifred's ability. Um, that'll put us at um, five, six, seven, eight against two. A minus four. That's fine. I draw a card with perception, and I get the last two clues off that location as damage. Okay, so looking at the board, we've got to do like one, two, three more moves, which is like a fair amount of actions wasted, unfortunately, and we've got to get a decent amount of clues off these ones. We got the four clue guy already. Where is he? We got the three clue guy. We got the one clue guy. So I think there's two two clue guys left. I could be wrong, but I think that's how it's distributed. So not looking good. Hopefully I get my other intel report to grab two clues for four resources. Do our upkeep. Ellsworth's boots. Uh, don't have time to play that, unfortunately. Um, Joey could have got me there earlier, but unfortunately... Um, no, you know what, though? Joey, if I pay him for two, can let me play all of these very quickly. That's tempting. Uh, this guy readies. We get a Doom, which is going to place a one of these... I believe here is the next closest location. I've only got one, two, three locations left. Well, uh, one, two, three, four locations left. Okay, maybe not as bad as I thought. Encounter cards... You must either move it to your location or place a Doom on it. So I either lose a whole round or I lose one action this turn. I think the answer is to move him. I think. But that puts me in a really bad position if I fail the evade. But I think that I have to, unfortunately. So he's going to shuffle over to me. I'm going to be evading this guy first action which is going to be with what? What am I going to, how am I going to do that? Am I just going to have to do five against one to do that? So I think I have to do the evade with the easy mark and the Ellsworth boots into it. So it'll be five, six, seven, eight against one minus three. So I succeed by a lot, which evades enough of them. Did forget to use Winifred's draw ability. We'll do that now for on you, cool. Um, that definitely evades, like, at least those ones, if not that one as well. Um, so that's good. And then we need to move a location. And it's a matter of which of those we move to. And I don't think it particularly matters which I move to. I think this one's safer to move to first, because I'm ending a turn here. If I end a turn here, I might have to eat that two horror thing. I'm far more likely to fail it by el an elder thing amount. So we'll move here and spend a clue. This is a two-clue location. And that is how we got there. So we can get that those two clues off with the mineral specimen. And we can even like commit on you and the momentum into that test. So that's pretty cool. Okay, cool. So we upkeep for a watch this. Not necessary, but good icons. These guys all are ready now. Um, we get one more Nameless Madness, which I believe goes here. Um, that seems correct. Yep, that seems correct. And then an encounter card. Please not an enemy. Nightmare's Vapors. Shuffle the top two cards of the Techie Lily deck into your deck without looking at them. Absolutely, I cannot afford to lose the actions at the moment. So, we have to evade this guy first. 
and I'm going to commit the watch this and the momentum into it. Um, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three. So boom, 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 boom. That is six resources put into this. I am seven against one. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Minus one, so that's six against one. So the, um, these are both uh, fully active for me. This is a minus three to the test that I'm going to be doing next. Um, did I forget to draw with those? Yes. A miasmic crystal. Cool. I did forget to draw with them. Miasmic crystal is very good. Um, and then I'm going to use the mineral specimen to investigate the location with minus three difficulty. Um, I believe I just cancel that. And I just get to, to, to get the two clues for two damage on the location. That's action two. Um, this guy was evaded, and both of those are turned into... Ah, oh, no. I don't want to pick that up like that. There we go. Both of those are turned into um, damage. So that is now collapsed. And that got used up. Finally, I'm going to do what I said and go one, two for Joey. Um, that's not what I clicked on, but fine. A one, two for Joey. And then I'm going to spend one resource to play an item asset from my hand. One resource to play an item asset from my hand. One resource to play an item asset from my hand. So I've got this Miasmic Crystal in play with three uses. I'm going to use Joey to sell this for two. I'm going to use Joey to sell this for two. And I think we're all set. Yep. Upkeep. Um, take a Horror. Put this on the bottom of the Techie Lily deck. Yeah, we'll suffer that one. So we will take a Horror onto Joey. Put that on the bottom of the Tekka Lili deck, and then we'll use Danforth to draw three cards. Nice. Wow. Okay. That was a huge relief. Oh my god, that is a huge relief. That is pretty much exactly what I need right now. One more uh, Nameless Madness comes into play. I think, again, he has to go here. We've got two locations remaining. And we'll get an encounter card, a Frozen in Fear. That's a bummer. I'm going to have that for the rest of the game. I don't think that's going away anytime soon. So we have to evade this guy. We'll put a nimble and a quick thinking into it. Do we put on you into it as well? Five, six, seven against one. I think I save on you for the back half of the scenario. Yeah, seven against one. Frost token. Oh, thank God. All right. Great. Five against one. So we get our action back. We get our three moves. And we've evaded the guy. But importantly, we've also, like, evaded all of them. So we're going to get one move to here. Fine. One move to here. Fine. Uh, I did forget to trigger Winifred's ability, so I'm just going to do that now an arrogance. That didn't need to be committed to that last one, so that's fine. Um, also, I succeeded by two. I forgot to do all that as well. Uh, discard an asset you control. Let's go ahead and discard uh, Gregory. And then we will... Actually, um, no, we won't discard Gregory. Um, let me clean that up really quickly. Rather than discarding Gregory, um, when we draw that Tech Lily weakness, we'll cancel it, place it on the bottom of the Tech Lily deck, and draw a card instead. Cool, so quick thinking. Or, uh, excuse me, an easy mark. And then we'll go ahead and spend one, two, three, four, just to grab all those clues off the location. Just get them. We'll turn those two clues into two damage. And we've collapsed all the pylons with a little bit of time left. Awesome. Um, and after that, we don't have a whole lot left to do. Um, so we're just going to... Should I play on you over Gregory now that I have the time? And I think the answer is yes. I'm going to go one, two, three play on you over Gregory. At the end of the round, I test this Frozen and Fear. Commit arrogance to it. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Uh, failed by a tremendous amount. Um, <laughs> and, and that gets get ri getting rid of. And I get to remove AF. Uh, 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 oh my god. A curse token from the bag. Alright, everyone on the board readies. Upkeep. My next backstab. Pretty useful, I think. And then at the end of the round, if each Miss Pylons collapsed, we advance this act. Set all but three copies of the Nameless Madness aside. We lose all of our clues. We remove each location except the Gate of Equa from the game. Investigators and copies of the Nameless Madness are not defeated by this effect. All other locations 
sir, excuse me, all of the cards of those locations are discarded. Put the four set-aside titanium ramp locations into play in a straight line to the right of the gate of the Qua. Put the set-aside hidden tunnel location to the, uh, to the right of the rightmost titanic ramp. Play Chief's Investigator and each remaining copy of the Nameless Madness into play at the leftmost titanic ramp. Remove the agenda deck from the game and advance to the current... Sorry, to the set-aside final mirage is both the current act and the current agenda. All right. The gate of Iqua, the titanic ramps, the hidden tunnel with three of these guys at our location... Um, shouldn't have moved them after I got them into place, but that's fine. Uh, and let's reveal what this one is. It is the One Shroud, One Clue. Put that right there. Um, it's connected to the locations to the left right as an additional cost for you to leave. Test four. If you fail, cancel the effects of the move. Any investigator at your location or connecting location may spend one clue to have you automatically succeed at this test. So I'm going to probably just grab the clue off this one. That seems to make sense. Um, but we do have to get into this Mythos phase first, which immediately spawns one of them. Because we're at the final mirage, each Nameless Madness gains Hunter. When one or more Doom will be put into play, instead spawn a set-aside copy of the Nameless Madness at the leftmost investigator's location. Run. And then our encounter card is going to be the Unsealed Phantasm. Spawn the nearest Miss Pylon that has not collapsed or your location if there are none in play. As a major bummer. I would have loved to have not dealt with this guy. Um, but it is what it is. We'll have to get rid of him somehow. <laughs> um, and to that end, let's see what we can do. We need to get out from under this guy. We're going to exhaust on you to evade him. Five, six, seven against four. And we're going to go eight, nine against four. As much as I don't want to commit these, I'm going to have to. Nine against four. Draw a card from Winifred. Take a damage. One on Anyu. Danforth draws us three cards. And that's put right there from Danforth's ability. And we are nine against four. A frost token and a zero. Eight against four. We succeed by four. Two draws from these, which gets me a shuffled deck. One horror, two cards. Very nice. And those go to the discard pile, and he's evaded. With no actions, because this is a free triggered ability. So that's kind of dealing with one problem. Next, we have to evade these guys. Um, five against one right now. Now, I need to get as many of these off of me as I can. And I cannot afford to evade these guys again next turn, and so I probably have to pull off this as well. So, we're going to evade these guys five, six, seven. Seven. Against, um, against one. And we're going to hope and pray that we get enough. A zero. Yes! Oh, thank goodness. Oh, that is such a huge relief. Uh, we didn't draw a card from Winifred, but we get a 45, or excuse me, a 25 auto in return. So all of them get evaded. And now I'm pretty sure that I absolutely have to uh, just try to leave. Testing four. Because I don't have time to get this clue. So I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, I definitely have to. Uh, so I'm just going to try and leave. So we're going to be at 5, uh, 6, 7, 8. Once again, just absolutely buggering myself, spawning these tokens in. Um, 8 against 4 to leave the location. And I think that's as good as I can do. We draw a card, a quick thinking. Let's see what we get. A minus 3. Super. Drawn card from the manual dexterity. And we're gone. This is a two shroud, one clue location with a test three uh, agility. Cool. So, these guys all ready. He readies. We get upkeep. Technically, we should have tested this, but I am currently one against three with no commits. So, um, we just fail that. And uh, we do draw the top card of the Tekken Lili deck, which is discarding a card at random from your hand and placing this in the bottom of the Tekken Lili deck. Um... I think that I... 
think I cancel this and draw a card. It's probably the correct thing to do. Um, and that would have been back, like, at the end of my turn before I clicked upkeep, right? Um, so I'd have an extra card, and then this would be ready, and this would go back under there. So one of these guys comes onto my location again. Uh, it's going to be a real pain to get out of here, I'm realizing. And then I get an encounter card. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I don't have... Um, I have to do the exact same thing again, don't I? Oh, that is just so painful. Okay. Um, but but we can do it. We can do it. Um, I can choose three in any order. Three in any order. Can I just get out of here? Can I do a move? Succeed at that agility test? Do a nimble and then just succeed at try get a whole bunch of agility test attempts in? I think I'm gonna try that. So we're gonna use on you. We're going to evade this guy. Oh man, this is this is beautiful. Okay. We're going to exhaust on you and discard on you to do the three in any order. So he's she's getting discarded. We're going to move to a connecting location as a fast triggered ability, first thing. So we're going to try to do this move. We're going to be five against three when we attempt to leave here. So five against three. We're going to be six, seven against three. I think that's, that's all of those, all six. Seven against three. Um... Let's just get to eight against three with the with the quick thinking. Minus two. Two cards from Lucky Cigarette Cases. Um, we'll just take the horror and get the three cards. That goes there because of that. Um, we'll get the six resources. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's watch this. Uh, we'll get our action. And we successfully did that move. So we just go here. And we're away from him. Now this is an agility 2 to leave this one. So, now that that agility test on that move is done, <laughs> I can immediately move to a connecting location to a maximum of 3 times. So the first move that I attempt to do from this is going to be to my adjacent location, which I have to beat this test of two agility. So for that, this is move one. Let's just start tracking this. I've done the move there, and I've done one move on that. Um, I'm going to commit Ellsworth's Boots and this Breaking and Entering to be five, six, seven, eight, drawing a card with Winifred against the agility test on the location, minus four. Uh, so 8 minus 4 is another successful move. So I get another move with Nimble. That was move number 1. That shoves me over to here. I'm now at an Agility 1 location to do a move. So for my next Nimble move, which is move 2 of the 3 that I get, I'm going to again have to test. 5 against 1, we're going to commit the Small Radio and the Green Soapstone. Drawing a card from Winifred against one. Seven against one. Uh, that's So that's six against one. So that succeeds. And I'm here. And uh, those shouldn't have clues. <laughs> but um, each undefeated investigator is at the hidden tunnel, so we advance the act. You emerge from the tunnel, daylight blinding you as the sun peeks out from behind the jagged mountaintops in the distance. Behind you, the entity rushes towards the exit. You prepare yourself for the end of the wall of mist, miasma, and madness, feeling like much like an oncoming train. Um, uh, this is R2 for me, because all five mist pylons were collapsed, and the truth of the mirage eludes you. Uh, before I continue on with the resolution, I just want to say what a massive shout-out to you, because like, I still had a plus-two skill value thing to do <laughs> after the move and nimble resolutions. That's that's hilarious that I was able to pull that off in one go, but I'm very glad I played her, because um, that was incredible. 
Suddenly, a droning hum emerges from the tunnel, and hope renews in your heart. You take flight from the, beneath the archway as bright blue cracks spread rapidly across, along the walls. Without the pylons, the integrity of not just the facility within the mountain, but the entire city is compromised. The icy floor cracks open. The cyclopean architecture of the alien city begins to sink into the snow. This might be your burial place, but at least you will take this entity and the rest of the damnable city with you. Then you hear it, the roaring engine of an airplane overhead. The last of Takata's three planes soars over the city, and familiar shouts echo throughout the ancient ruinous streets. There they are, by that tunnel, quickly! Two sledges slide into view, pulled by the remainder of the dogs Elia left in the barrier camp, and manned by several member, members of the crew of the Theodosia. You cannot hold back your surprise or joy at the sight. They motion frantically for you to join them, their gaze is fixed on the collapsing mountain. One of the crewmates explains that they fixed up the last of the airplanes and decided to use it to look for you, even knowing the risks. When we spotted you entering that huge cavern without most of your gear, we thought you might need a rescue. Didn't expect it, that to be quite this literal, he says. You tell him his timing couldn't be more perfect. Together you race off into the foothills as the city collapses into the ice behind you. The moment you make it back to the ice shelf, you tell the crew to prepare for departure. You barely even break down the barrier camp. It doesn't matter anymore. All that matters is getting out of this place with your lives intact and with all the evidence you have found, of course. The voyage home is quiet and peaceful, but your thoughts are anything but. To this day, you wonder about the true nature of the entity you encountered within the ancient Elder Thing facility. You have no idea what you're going to tell the greater academic community when you return. Your actions have ensured none can study or explore the nightmare city ever again. But what of the Elder Things? Will those that survived remain in hiding? Or will they, like you, choose to learn more about this new age they find themselves in? Only time will tell. Until then, you can rest easy knowing that the creature that dwelled beneath the ice cannot possibly have survived. The air shimmers around your pen hand as you put the final touches on your notes regarding the expedition. Yes, it is finally over. Right? In your campaign log, record the facility was destroyed. In your campaign log, record the survivors of the expedition were... And we list the names of each member of the uh, expedition team who's not crossed off. So Danforth, Takata, um... Uh, uh, Dr. Oh my god, I don't remember his name. That is very embarrassing. Um, D Danforth's uh, counterpart, Dyer, William Dyer, thank you, and Cookie um, survived. Um, and Winifred. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. It's none, but we turn, we do gain 10 bonus experience if we save reality from an unspeakable fate. Each investigator suffers a physical trauma and a mental trauma as they never truly recover from their ordeal. The investigators win the campaign. Well, I just really quite like Edge of the Earth. Um, it's got a really kick-ass finale. I think it's like super cinematic the way that this ends. I I've enjoyed both of these playthroughs of it that I've done on the channel. Um, it's just a cool campaign. Um, I think that the replayability there with uh, with your guys dying is really cool. I think I learned that intentionally killing off Claypool... Um, is a terrible idea if you intend to try to get more Fatal Mirages. And now I have to do, like, another play for through to try and actually play Fatal Mirage. I've played it twice between my two play for throughs because the first time it went so poorly and I was accumulating uh, so much Frost in this in this campaign, I mean to say, um, that I just couldn't revisit it. So, anyways, uh, thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, that's the end of this campaign, obviously. Um, I do have... <laughs> so I have um, Jack Strazzi's... Um, betrayal at the Mountains of Madness like a couple of episodes recorded but I started it and then I just got super busy and it's been months since I played it. I have the third scenario like recorded and not edited and I just have so little motivation to get it done um, right now so I'm going to just like try and get back into the swing of recording videos and stuff. I'm probably going to publish a bit of the campaign play along um, for TCU that I just kind of did an announcement for Um and so there's also the um, League of Extraordinary Investigators going on Season 7 for the Dream Eater Side B. So I'm going to be pretty busy with those two things, the campaign play along and that. And when, that's, those are, when, when one of those is wrapped up, I'm going to refocus on finishing off the Betrayal at the Mountains of Madness, which is like a cool alternate take on uh, the Edge of the Earth. So uh, with all that said, I will see you in the next campaign. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.